Okay, video seven. Let's wrap things up. This is where we are in our coding. This was our goal. Let's make these charts over here. We want a histogram and we want this chart over time of the population. Sort of recording those histograms every tick so we can watch how they change going up and down relative to the total population that we have. Okay, so first thing, I forgot to do one thing last time. As we reset, we really would like all of these set methods to be called. So let's go ahead and do those right here. Set the size, set recovery, and set distance. Because even though we weren't dragging them back and forth on that first time step, on that first shot, we want them to be all set up in the right way. Okay, so that's out of the way. Let's go to our scene builder. Scene builder on the right hand pane, insert right. We need a vertical box. So let's go open our VBox here, insert it on the right. Perfect. Okay, let's make it a little larger. I would like it to be 200 wide. So let's make it 200 wide there. Prefer it with 200 over here. That'll be good because we're going to be dropping in some panes on top of it. We want to be drawing in a pane. So let's put a pane in here and let's add a label underneath it so we can sort of identify what it is for the user. Let's add in a second pane for the histogram. And let's make it have a label as well. There we go. Label down here underneath. Let's just add it in here. It's gonna be easier to make it go in the right spot. There we go. Okay, so this label should say like population over time. And this one is our histogram snapshot. Okay, so here we go. This will have our simulation with our right sizes of things. And we have our buttons at the bottom. Everything should be ready, except we need to wire these up. If we're going to draw on them dynamically, our controller needs names for them. So let's go ahead and do that here. XML, I want a pane called the chart. And I want a pane called the histogram. Great. Those are ready to be wired. Let me go back to Scene Builder. And over here in our code, we should be able to give them some nice IDs. So the chart is the top one, and the bottom one is the histogram. Great. Save them. We come back. The wires are there. The connections are made. We can start working with them. Okay, so first, let's, let's make the histogram. We're going to do that one, and then we'll think about the circles and drawing them in the chart. So to make our histogram work, I am going to use what's called an enum map. And I'm going to be mapping from the state to a rectangle. So this is what I want to be doing here. I want to take a state and say, hey, the susceptible. What is the rectangle for susceptible? I'm going to be using this later to be able to look up how many people are susceptible and then immediately find the rectangle that I need to be drawing. So I need to be choosing that one, the state. I need to import the state that I have here. Oh, I need to import the enum map as well. Great. Let's call that the histogram rectangles equals a new enum 
map state rectangle and the constructor for this requires us to give it this class of the state. So we're now ready to start mapping from states to remember these rectangles that we're throwing in. Okay, so down here under setup is where I want to be making these rectangles. Okay, so notice down here in our reset, we wiped the world of all those circles. We want to do the same thing for our histogram. Clear it out, and let's while we're here, let's do the same thing for the chart. Get the children, clear them out. Okay, so every time I hit reset, my charts will be wiped, just like the world is wiped. And then it gets filled in with a new simulation. Well, let's go ahead and fill it in down here with new rectangles. So for each state in the state values, let's draw a rectangle. Rectangle R equals a new rectangle. Now I'm gonna make them about uh, 60 wide. Right now they get a height of zero and their color is going to be the state's color. I am going to set their translate X. I want them to be drawn next to each other. And so, well, oh, we got a question here. Where am I gonna put them? I've got my for loop here. I think I need some numbers. So, int offset equals zero to start off, and then I can draw them at offset as long as each time I say offset plus equals, say, 70. Is that gonna to be too much? 70, 140, yes. It'll be right at the edge. Uh, let's say like 65, I'll be happier with that. Okay. And now here, we get to put stuff for that state. Remember your rectangle. Okay, and hey, histogram, get your children. You're going to add this particular rectangle. So they will all be there on the screen and ready to go. So let's try this out. Let's see if I can find these rectangles on the screen. Load it up, I say reset. Ooh, things are broken. Okay, so what did I do here? Reset, reset calls set size. Set size says draw the simulation, but the simulation doesn't exist yet. Oh, that little thing I changed right at the beginning. I put them in the wrong order. Okay, so set size, set recovery, set distance. Those should all be happening after we make our simulation. Great, they rely on talking to the simulation. So, are we happy now? Yes! Okay, I don't see anybody over here. They are not showing up because they have no height. Okay, so let's go back and now try to get things to show up. I am going to add another method right here. It's going to try to encapsulate a lot of stuff. I am going to draw some charts. This is going to be my method. Let's go ahead and put it down here at the bottom. Public void. Draw charts. I want this to happen, not just here, but I want it to happen inside my tick as things are working their way through. Let me just double check. Yes, so here inside my step, I want to draw charts. So both when I started off and as every time step goes, I want those charts to be drawn. Perfect. So here's how we draw the charts. We need to make another enum map. 
Let's see if I can get in here. Yes. You know, map. And this time I'm going to map from the state to an integer. Current population equals a new enum map again, state class, and we're ready to go. So every time step, we are going to calculate based on the population how many people are in each state. So for person p in the simulation get people, let's ask them, have we seen this state yet? So if I do not contain the current state, then I need to initialize it. Current pop put p dot get state zero. Okay, and then every time I should be able to say current pop put dot get state and one plus the current pop dot get p dot get state okay so this section builds up my histogram in terms of numbers I have a map now between my states and integers okay next thing I need to do is to go out and draw my rectangles so for each state in my rectangles, if I found my current population contains that state. So did I see anybody that was infected this time? Did I see anybody that was susceptible? If so, well, then I'm going to get that rectangle and set the height of it to be the current population at that state. So if there's 50 people that are susceptible, the height of that rectangle is going to be 50. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Reset. There we go. We've got our histograms. Wait a second. Let's, let's start the simulation and watch them. The histograms are upside down. The histograms are starting at the top and going, all right, because anytime we deal with graphics, zero, zero is in that upper left-hand corner. And so if we started them off just with a zero coordinate, then making them taller is going to make them uh, grow bigger in the y direction down. Okay, well, let's fix that. We're gonna do some translation here. We're gonna set your translate y, and these numbers are just ones that I came up with to sort of make it work right. state here. Well, this is 100 because of my initial population up here that I created for 100. Again, that should be refactored and turned into a number that is more abstract. But let's see if they start at the bottom now and look more like a histogram that we're used to. So reset. Yes, they're aligned at the bottom and then they're going to be going up and down as the infection spreads. Good. Okay, so this is what we want to be seeing. Okay, so Next thing we want to do is talk about those circles. Well, right here, we're going through the current population and we are getting how tall things should be. Let's do the same thing for the other one. So if it contains this, then I want to be drawing on my time chart a little circle. 
and let's make it a radius one, and it has this state dot get color. Perfect. Let's load in circles. Okay. Where is my translate x? I am going to talk to the clock, get its number of ticks, and divide it by 5.0. And where is its y going to be? Translate y is going to be, again, we have to flip it upside down, 130 minus the current population get the state. Okay, and just like we had added them, these have to be dynamically added in here every time. Our chart then, get children add that circle. Okay, so let's see what happens. Almost done here. Reset. We can see our dots starting to show up there, and if we start, hey, things changing over time. Boom. Here is the inflection point. Here's where the spike happens. Yes. Okay. So, we notice that things are moving a little slower than our original simulation. Well, that's because we talked about the speed here. I think if we change that speed to a three, this might, we might make that another slider someday, but well, not right now. We're trying to finish this up. And so if I reset and start, then I should be moving a little bit faster. Oh, let's try it a little faster here. Let's try to move things with a speed of five here. Reset, start. Are things actually moving any faster at all? I don't think so. I never used speed, did I? Oh, IntelliJ is even telling me this field is never used. So it doesn't matter how much you change it, Mark. It's not going to be used. So what do we need to do? We need to return dx times speed. Return dy times speed. Uh, let's see if that changes anything. I was wondering why it wasn't going faster. Hey, okay. That's what I was expecting. This is my spike all the way up, and then the spike goes back down. Great. Okay, well, I would like the simulation to stop when I have no more infected people. Now, there's a lot of places I could add that. I'm gonna add it down here under draw charts because this is where I calculate the current population and where I can easily ask that question of, hey, if it's not the case that the current population contains a key for state.infected, well, then it's time to stop. All right, that was pretty quick. Let's see if that works here. Reset, start, here we go. People are getting infected all over the place. And as soon as there are no more infected, population simulation should stop. Yes. Okay. I think we're where we wanted to be. We can start to see the effect of social distancing. Say, wait a second, people can't move. If we let them start moving too early, then all we're gonna see is a second spike. We can start to explore those dynamics with our simulation that we built. Great, okay, this code will be accessible to our class in our Microsoft Teams space. I think I've set that up already. So good luck with your final projects.